man, do I ever wish I was a millennial real estate agent. So I've been working pretty hard here the last couple of days, and, and as many of you know, I coach real estate agents all over the country, all different shapes, size, colors, ages, businesses, that type of thing. Um, and I got to tell you, man, this stuff I see from millennials, I know it's something that we always razz all over them and how bad they are and that type of thing, but man, do I have a million examples. Um, you know, I've seen all walks of life when it comes to real estate agents. I, I currently coach over 30,000 agents at all different levels from people that just follow us to those that are in the monthly coaching and that type of thing. And when it comes to that age demographic, to the millennial demographic, lazy isn't the word for it. Um, now, and by the way, it's not just real estate. I mean, uh, you know, I own a bunch of racehorses, so we have some uh, blue collar type workers that work out at the barn. And let me tell you, if they're a millennial, they got nothing but excuses. And this is not a small sample. This is not eight or 10 or 12 millennials that I've worked with. I'm talking about hundreds that I've worked with all over the country. So I got to tell you, as you've seen in the title of this video here, the reason I wish I was a millennial real estate agent, and this is, I mean, this is just the truth behind the whole thing. Your competition sucks. Like if you're, if you are a millennial, I was talking to a lady the other day and I said, you know, based on your age demographic, um, the generation Y uh, is the, the common term for millennials, or I should say the more appropriate term for millennials because it has such a bad negative vibe to it now. I said, if, if, at your age group, your competition is horrible. You only got to be like that much bigger to be dominant in your generation. So much so that you could like show up on time and beat all of your competition. You know, from my generation and generations before me, um, it's been tough. You know, I mean, it's a tough market. And if you are a millennial, the competition doesn't even show up. Um, I was uh, doing some interviewing for a couple of positions I've got open. And let me tell you, if I see they're of millennial age, you can always tell by the year they graduated high school or college. If they are of a millennial age, many of them won't even show up for a job interview or will show up late or will have excuses or 30 years old and still live with their mother, right? I mean, there's just countless examples of that. And, you know, I would almost equate it to, um, you know, I'm from, uh, I was born and raised in Columbus, Ohio. So let's say the Ohio State Buckeyes playing the local middle school football team. That's what it would be like for you to be a uh, millennial real estate agent with competition that's as weak as it is. So here's what it comes down to, and this is the lesson for you regardless of your age. I don't care if you're a 70-year-old realtor. Here's a lesson for you that I think you'll find a tremendous uh, bit of value in. Um, so if you operate at that capacity, regardless of how old you are, if you find distractions all day, if you sit on your computer all day, or your phone, I mean, think about your smartphone for a second. Is this a business device or an entertainment device for you? Because there are people that make millions of dollars a year using this as their computer and contact database. And there's others that sit there and play World of Warcraft or texting friends or Snapchat and Instagram and playing around all day long. Um, email is another one. If you sit there and you think your job is just to continuously check your email and sift through it and delete some things and respond to some things and get on a couple of webinars and download some reports and read this new ebook and here's a new business idea. How many sellers have you met this week? because you might actually be licensed, but not practicing. How many buyers have you met this week? Because you might actually be licensed, but not practicing. If you're in your email, if you're on your text message, if you're doing all that stuff, you're actually looking for jobs. You're looking for clients. You're not actually working with clients, right? So when you think about the distractions that millennials have, Literally walking and texting and walk into a water fountain or walk off a bridge or whatever the heck. They're, they're just oblivious that there's a real world going on out here. If you've co-opt with real estate agents before, you know more often than not the co-oping agent sucks. 
no time discipline, no communication, always dropping the ball. We know this to be true. Now we can say this agent to agent, right? We never say that to the general public. I'd never recommend bashing our industry by any means, but I mean, let's be honest. Have you worked co-op deals before where you couldn't reach them? How many times have you heard from a buyer that says, you know, I've called seven agents. You're the first one that's ever called me back. We hear that all the time. This is not sometimes. It's not that you'd have a story at a cocktail party. I always get phone calls. This phone, this particular phone never rings until I'm doing a, a Facebook Live. Then I'm getting phone calls. But how many times, this would not be a cocktail party story for you to say, you know, seven years ago, I talked to a buyer and they said they called seven different realtors and I was the first one to call them back. No, that happens every week we hear that. So regardless of your age group, what I want you to think about is that generation of millennials has a reputation for being lazy, being distracted, not staying focused, no real career-driven goals, uh, just going to skate by for a while, starve to death, live with mom, live with friends, whatever. That generation does have a reputation for that. Well-earned, by the way. And keep in mind, there are some people that make millions of dollars that are millennials because their competition's so weak and they are highly accountable. But couldn't we consider the entire group of realtors millennials when it comes to business mindset, focus, that type of thing? Look, again, not talking bad about anybody. Let's look at NAR stats. NAR stats says the average realtor sells like four houses per year, four houses per year which means that they're not doing what they're supposed to do. If they just called, re if they called FISBOs, if they called expireds, if they got with local divorce attorneys that are referring business, they would have more business than that. So I want you to think about your business and that if you're this much better than the competition, if you're this much better than what all those other agents are doing and knowing that they're distracted, they're spending all their time on their phone. If you go to your local board of realtors meeting, you'll see everybody just sitting here on their phone and nothing has to do with business. Nothing at all has to do with business. So what I want you to think about, trying to get rid of all these calls and stuff happening here. I need to figure out how to fix that uh, while we're doing these. But what I want you to think about is what could you do? What little changes could you make in your real estate business to get really dominant, to get really productive, to every single day know that you're doing a dollar productive activity that will truly produce buyers and sellers? Because if you're not doing that, the distractions will expand to the amount of time that you allot for them. And that may be 14 hours a day you sit there doing distractions all day long. So think about that in your real estate business. Um, and again, I don't, I don't mean to be condescending by any means. About your competition, yeah, because I mean, we've worked with them. But if I group the general business called real estate agents, I think they would agree. You know, the fact is, I'll tell you kind of inside baseball here, a lot of the agents I meet with, I say, how many of you would agree that you are your own worst enemy? And they'll all raise their hand at one of my conferences, right? How many of you agree that if you worked for yourself, you'd fire your ass today? They're like, oh, yeah, absolutely. I would never put up with what I do. So you are your own worst enemy. That's true for the business as a whole. And most of us are willing to admit that. But if you can get really focused, just know that all the competition has those issues. You no longer do. So, you know, a lot of times I'll see the light switch go on for people. So as an example, like every Wednesday, I do a webinar at um, blueprintforclosings.com. Uh, I do a webinar every single Wednesday and agents that are not involved in Greg Luther Inner Circle, they realize here's some things that I can do to get really, really focused so I can take advantage of that marketplace. I told my oldest son, my oldest son's a millennial, and I told him, I said, dude, if you'd get your stuff together, your generation sucks so bad that you only got to be that good to make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. It's literally the Ohio State Buckeyes football team playing the local Columbus Middle School team. That's how dominant you would be. Well, the same is true for real estate agents that I coach all over the country. I'd say, how many deals did you do last year? 
uh, 40, okay, of those 40 transactions, how many of them on the other side, that other agent didn't do what they were supposed to, they weren't accountable, they were dragging their feet, possibly cost you the deal, how often does that happen? 35, right? I hear that a lot. So if that's the case, you've only got to be that much better to really become productive as a real estate agent. But it comes down to what do I do every day, right? It doesn't matter how fast you're spinning your wheels if your GPS is not telling you where to go. You're just spinning in circles. So going faster doesn't help. Doing more work every day doesn't help. Putting in more hours and being checking your email on the weekends, that doesn't help. You're not going towards a destination. So think about your business that way. And again, uh, you know, I never want to talk bad about any industry, let alone our own real estate industry. But you've worked with enough people to agree that there's a lot of agents in your marketplace that probably shouldn't have their license, but they're difficult to deal with. That is your competition. So don't tell me the competition's tough. It's not tough. You've dealt with them. What you've got to do is say, you know what, if I were to consider them that negative thought of millennial, all of those things, lazy, don't show up, always late, making excuses all the time, half the time they don't even have a vehicle to drive, like they're trying to take Ubers all over the place because that'll save them on the car and on the insurance. Just the workarounds they're trying to do rather than being productive to society and truly helping the marketplace. There's no greater feeling than what we do as real estate agents to help a family get into a home. They'll never experience that feeling. So, I want you to think about your business that way. Take action accordingly and start utilizing approaches that will give you that GPS that you need, that will say, here's what I need to do every day so that I can be productive. Um, I appreciate all the, the comments and the emails and the text and all that stuff. Uh, Eddie, I see your comment here. You just signed up for the luxury training. Excited to have you there. Um, Eddie's been following for a while as well. He's seen a lot of agents breaking into the luxury real estate market. Uh, we do have a training coming up on that very soon in Orlando. So um, there will be a lot of agents there learning from other realtors that maybe started right here watching us on YouTube or Facebook Live and then instantly exploded their business by using the right types of approaches. I want you to be the next one. Um, every Wednesday, we do a, a webinar, blueprintforclosings.com. Get involved. Join up with us here. Follow for a month or two. Watch what it can do for your real estate business when you stop wasting time and stop acting like a millennial, right? Uh, so have a profitable week. If there's anything I can do for you, let me know. Otherwise, get yourself registered. Blueprintforclosings.com should be in the, reg in the link or the description or something here somewhere. Any questions that you have, let me know. I'm here to help you grow your business. Go out there and sell some houses today. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye for now. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that video and listen, we've got a lot more information for you to help you with growing your real estate business. We load new videos nearly every day and I want you to have access. So you gotta do two important things. It's both totally free. Number one, I want you to subscribe to this channel. You'll see the little subscribe button for you to click. If you don't have an account with YouTube, set it up. It's totally free. You gotta subscribe to this channel. And the most important factor, you gotta ring the bell. Right next to that subscribe button, you'll see a little bell to turn on notifications that will let you know every time I load a new money making video to help you with growing your real estate business. Subscribe and make sure you ring the bell. We'll see you in the next video.